All right, so the L4001 cable wasn't available in the US. It may be available now, I don't know, because I don't know when you're watching this video. But I wanted to go ahead and get the uh, XPA125 and the X6100 on the air. Oh, that was, that was lovely. So I ordered this cable, and it came with this little screwdriver, I guess. <laughs> and their, their Phillips head screws inside there, and they gave me a standard screwdriver. I was going to say, I guess they think that if you are capable enough of putting something like this together, you're not capable of owning a screwdriver. I don't know, but uh, we'll see how long that lasts. This is a 3.5 millimeter speaker cable, which is tip, ring, ring, sleeve, and then it's broken out on the far end. So I'll be able to use this for quite a lot of projects. And then over here is a six pin mini DIN connector that you would commonly find on older Yezu radios or on PS2 mice and keyboards. Um, and then I have all the wires broken out and tinned because I did a project a very long, long time ago on the channel that needed a breakout cable. And so here we have a breakout cable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a um, photo up on the screen so here is a quick overview of the cable pinout. On the left-hand side, you'll see the XPA125B, and I pulled this page out of the operator's manual, the owner's manual, and you'll see the pinout diagram laid down there, and then on the right-hand side, you'll see the X6100 diagram and the pinout on that, and then down at the bottom, I made a cross-connect reference. The one thing that you're really gonna wanna take into account when you're working on this is that the chassis connector is labeled one way and the wire itself is labeled another way. And you can see the pins are actually reversed because of how they made up. So be very aware when you're wiring this thing up. If you wanna see more of this diagram or you wanna see a longer version of this diagram, then go ahead and pause the video here and it will stay up for as long as you keep it paused. Okay, I think the first thing that we need to do is mark out which color goes to which connector pin on this side. And these connector pins are backwards from what's on the connection. So we have a block here like this in the center and then on the radio side, on the amplifier side, it is six, five, four, three, two, one. And on the cable side, it's going in that way. So it's actually going to be block one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. So when you flip them around, they will actually marry up properly. So let's get the colors sorted out. We have one hooked, hooked wire, unhook. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we have this extra one here. This extra one's gonna be really easy because it's probably just the shield of the connector. So hook the shield up, hook that up. Yep, all right, so let's put an S and an uninsulated color there. And then let's do red because red's next. Six, five, three, four, one, two. All right, so red is two. And then let's do green. Five, that was easy. And let's do brown. That's one. And let's do orange. Orange is three. Black, 
black. Black is six. And then the last one is yellow and it has to be four. Hey, look at that, it's four, yellow. And now if we look at our wiring diagram, we want to hook pin one up to nothing. We want to hook pin two up to tip. We'll hook pin three up to ring one. Pin four up to ring two. Pin five, not connected, also. Pin six is going to sleeve. And then the shield is not connected. Okay, so on the radio side of things, the sleeve is ground. And pin five is not connected. Pin four is ring two, which is ALC. And pin three is band voltage. This is how you would select the band on the radio and have the band on the amp automatically match. And ping, ping, <laughs> pin two is TRX, which is gonna be transmit. And then that's not connected, that's not connected, and that's not connected. Over on the amplifier side of the house, we have pin two is PTT. Pin three is band. Pin four is ALC. Not connected, not connected. Pin six is ground. And then the sleeve is not connected. So that makes sense. Let's get it wired up. So let's take our wiring diagram and let's take our wires and marry these folks together. All right, so I need red is going to go into left. And these are tiny wires, so I'm actually gonna fold it over first to get it in there. And then orange is next for ring one. And then yellow is ALC. And then ground is black. So now let's verify this. I'm gonna do a real quick verification. These are definitely gonna connect, because if they don't, I'll be really disappointed in the manufacturer. All right, so those all connect. Now I can use these to test over here. And red goes to pin two, and pin two is on the bottom. Yep. Orange goes to pin three, and pin three is over here. Yep. Yellow goes to pin four, and pin four is the opposite of pin three. Yep. And then black goes to pin six, which is up here. Yep. All right, let's plug it into the radio and see what happens. Okay, so this is going to be fun. We have our custom cable. We have the MFJ dummy load watt meter. We have the Zygu X6100 and the Zygu XPA125B amplifier. Let's get them all married together. The tip ring sleeve cable that we made up goes into the accessory port on the side of the radio. The six pin mini DIN connector goes into the accessory port on the back of the amplifier, like so. And I'm gonna turn all these things on. I'm gonna turn on the light, ooh. And then I'm gonna turn on the amp. And I'm gonna turn on the radio. All I need now is a Zygu dummy load and watt meter. All right, so we're on 14074, and if I switch off of the dummy load, you can see the waterfall go crazy with FT8 activity. So I'm gonna switch back on the dummy load and all the signals are gonna go away. So now we can test to our heart's content without interfering with anybody. So let's do that. Let's do this testing thing. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is prove that I can switch bands and the amplifier will track with me. And you can see it's in manual mode and it's on 160 meters. So let's long press that button to get into auto. 
And now if I change 12 meters, 10 meters, 6 meters, 160 meters, 75 meters, 80 meters, auto, auto, 40 meters. Let's, let's stay on 40 meters. Okay. Now I want to turn the amplifier on. And in the owner's manual for the XPA125, not the XPA125, in the owner's manual for the X6100, it says no more than 2.5 watts. I can't go from 2 watts to 2.5 watts to 3 watts. I can only go to 2. So let's start out there. I have in this lower port over here, this top one is the accessory, this lower one is the CW key. I have my ham key, my CW key, and it's set for straight key mode, which means it's just going to put out a solid signal. So we've got 1.4 in and 75 out at 1.0 to 1 SWR and uh, no tuner used. So that's pretty good right there. And this thing's reading almost 100 watts over here. So we're definitely getting some output. It said FT817 there for a second. That was scary. Um, which one of these two meters is correct? The meter here that says what power is going out? The meter, which one of these three? The meter here that says what power is going in? Or the meter here? So this is saying two watts, this is saying 1.4, and this is saying 76, and this is saying 100. Okay, so it looks like everything's working. Let's switch to 20 meters. And it switched to 20 meters automatically. And we are up at 83, and we're putting out 100 watts. We're putting 1.5 in. Now, in the owner's manual, it says that when you hook the ALC connectors together, which I've done, the ALC will track with each other, and they will take care of all their problems. So I'm going to go down to 0.1 watts, the lowest setting on the 6100. And we're getting 10 watts here, and we're getting 10 watts there. So 0.1 in, 10 out is great. I'm going to turn this up, 0.2, up to 20. 0.3, 27, 30, and it just steadily keeps climbing, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, you can see 38 Celsius on the temperature there, radio's not very warm at all, it's cool to the touch, 1 watt, 1 watt in, 90 watts out, according to that, and then I'm up at 5, and we're 92, and it should kick in some kind of protection circuit. Five's as high as I can go on battery power. Let's plug in some shore power. The XPA125, as you've seen in previous videos, starts complaining when it has high input or high SWR. So we've got shore power in. Now let's get back to testing. And we're doing five out. We're over 100 here. We're at 92 there. Yes, I'm at 10 watts here, and it's balancing itself out just fine. And we're at about 120 there, 125 there. So I think it's doing all the things that it's supposed to do, because otherwise it would complain. Let's go to 50, and we're already down on 6 meters here, and let's switch mode over to AM, narrow FM, AM. Okay, so that's how we get into FM mode. And we're trying our best to put 10 watts out of the radio and all the automatic circuitry is taken care of and we're at 100 watts there. So I am pretty impressed overall with how this whole thing's working. Give me some links, some links. Give me some uh, information in the comments down below as to what you think about this. But so far, this has done the thing that I set out to have it do. There's no L4001 cable available yet. When it does come available, it's going to do all of this stuff, one would hope. But here we are way ahead of the game because we're hams. There is a video right over here that I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.